Yeah, I'm f- absolutely fascinated by mushrooms. I had uh, Paul Stamets on the podcast. I saw, I saw like, that one. How great is that guy? That's super cool. With Man. his mushroom hat? Yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah, I got one if you want one. <laughs> that's awesome. I got, he gave me two mushroom hats. Oh, that's hats. amazing. Like, what am I going to do with two? In case one breaks. Yeah. <laughs> I have an extra mushroom hat. But There's know. a really cool documentary, actually. Um, uh, it's called Know Your Mushrooms, I think. And it's by you Ron by, by Ron Mann. And he, 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 he travels along with these mushroom hunters. Uh, up, I think a lot, a lot of it's in Oregon and up the coast of California down in New Mexico. But they're, they're professional foragers that then go and sell these mushrooms. Uh, but they track these foragers. And it's such a cool movie. That's interesting. Um, the, what I was going to say is you, you better know mushrooms because they'll fucking kill you if you don't. Well, that, that's the <laughs> thing, man. It's like, you know, what my first experience in foraging for mushrooms, I was like an apprentice chef at this restaurant and the chef comes in and was like, hey, check these out. And I was like, whoa, like, what the hell are these? And he's like, oh, they're morels. Like I found them mountain biking. And there's this stigma, you know, like as, as a kid, like your parents are like, don't, don't eat those, don't touch those. They're poisonous. They'll kill you. And it's like, okay, well, then you just, you just have this idea. Well, mushrooms come from the grocery store. Well, it's like, no, they grow, they come in the wild. And you know, that's, that's like my thing with meat is I, I teach my kids, like meat doesn't come from the grocery store. It's not, right. it's not a styrofoam package. That's not where it comes from. It's an animal. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and it's just like, you know, mushrooms that grow in the wild and, it, they're just they're crazy they they have this like micro micro uh michael risel yeah it's yeah it's, michael risel relationship with the uh animals or with the uh the trees rather um do you know the story of the amanita muscaria uh, i know what they are uh i don't know the story the amanita muscaria is the most fascinating one to me because that's the one that looks like looks like santa claus or the mario it's red with white mushroom. yeah, yeah. That is the subject of a book by a guy named John Marco Allegro, who was one of the head scholars uh, for deciphering the Dead Sea Scrolls. He deciphered the Dead Sea Scrolls for 14 years. He was an ordained minister, but he was also, in his study of theology, became agnostic. And he sort of, when he started realizing that there was all these different religions that had similar stories, and he was, you know, found all these uh, different connections, and he was trying, trying to like figure out what the origins of all these stories were. Well, after studying the Dead Sea Scrolls for, I think it was 14 years before he wrote this book, he decided that all of Christianity was a massive misunderstanding. And what it was originally about was these stories, these collection of stories that were about fertility rituals and psychedelic mushroom use. (laughs) And he traced the word Jesus back to an ancient Sumerian word that was a mushroom covered in God's semen. And that when God would come on the earth, that's what rain was. Rain was God coming on the earth. And that these mushrooms would rise up out of the ground. They would eat them and trip their fucking balls off, right? <laughs> that's a crazy story. <laughs> so I mean, you've got to think. Yeah. People that were foraging for food, especially back when there was no agriculture, right? I mean, it was, it was touch and go. You, know, you could easily starve to death. You, I mean, a bad winter, you know, a drought, people would starve to death. It was very, very common. So they would take foraging extremely serious, and they knew what they could eat, and they knew what they couldn't eat. Well, they knew that there was a relationship between carnivorous trees, and coniferous trees would grow these weird-looking, shiny red and white mushrooms under them. That's what coniferous trees is, pine trees. That's what we use for Christmas trees. Yeah. Those red and white packages... They, they are like the shiny packages underneath the Christmas tree. They are the color of Santa Claus. Yeah. They're common in Siberia. They're eaten constantly by caribou. Caribou are reindeer. Reindeer are addicted to these to the point where when people are having psychedelic mushroom rituals and they go outside to take a leak, the caribou will knock them over to get to the Amanita muscaria piss in the sand because they <laughs> smell the Amanita muscaria in the piss. And one of the ways these guys trip their balls off is they eat the mushroom and then they drink their own urine. They have a second process of this. Here's where it gets even crazier. In the times in Siberia where it would become extremely snowy, when the, the shaman would visit, the way they would get into the house is through the fucking chimney because the door would be snowed in. So they would climb in through the chimney. I mean, there's so many parallels to Santa Claus and to Christianity, to this one mushroom that they think was a, a massive part of shamanistic rituals. There it is right there. This is this Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is <laughs> Rudolph so crazy. the Red-Nosed I'm that's sure. That's such a cool story. <laughs> oh, dude, it's fucking crazy. So he yeah. wrote this book called The Sacred Mushroom and the Cross that was bought out by the Catholic Church. This I have to verify. 
Um, but I do know that they stopped production of it. I don't know if it was bought out by the Catholic Church. That's always been what's been told to me. But I do know that they stopped production of it forever. Um, he came out with another book called The Dead Sea Scrolls and the Christian Myth, which is still available. Then, more recently, like really recently, within the last decade, uh, a guy named Jan Irvin republished um, the John Marco Allegro books with permission from his family. I think it might have actually been one of those things where when a book is over 25 years old, it becomes like public domain or something like that, too. But this this book and this this story behind it is incredibly fascinating. And what he's basically saying is that and it makes sense. If you were living thousands of years ago and you stumbled upon these psychedelic mushrooms and you took them, you would experience God. You literally would think that that psychedelic state was you communicating with God. They would want to hide those from the Romans. So they hid them in parables and stories. And he explains what the original meaning of all these parables and stories are. Because, of course, you're going from ancient Hebrew, which is an extremely complicated language that also involves numbers. The letters are also numbers. And then that's translated to Latin and to Greek and then eventually to English. So a lot is lost in that translation. So it really takes a linguist and a, and a biblical scholar to kind of understand whether or not what this guy is saying is correct. I'm obviously not one of those, so I'm just talking <laughs> shit. But it's a... There's so many parallels. It's almost like, how could it be just coincidental that Santa Claus is red and white, that Santa Claus likes reindeers, that the Christmas tree is something that we use and the presents are under the Christmas tree, that Santa Claus lives in the fucking North Pole, which is Siberia, which is where <laughs> caribou live, and which is where these mushrooms are very common. I mean, there's so many parallels. It's really kind of fucking crazy. That's cool. Yeah, it's a great book. Anybody, I, I really highly recommend it because it's one of those books where you just gotta you read a few chapters and you gotta go. I, I think I may have to go back over that again. Yeah. go over yeah. it again. It's so, <laughs> it's it's so freaky. Very cool. But I've stumbled upon those in the wild. Those uh, Amity.